Alright, so recently I've managed to get my hands on some new SD cards over here. So this is a Lexa SD card and this is the original Sony branded SD card. So the Sony card retails at a RRP of $79 but I'm sure there are discounts offered online. And the Lexa is retailing at $49 uh, RRP in Singapore. So this one is about $30 more expensive than this one. So let's see if there's any difference to the cards and whether you should buy a Sony branded card or a generic Lexa branded card or your SanDisk card or something else. This card is rated for V60 so it means you can probably do 4K video with no issues but it's not a V90 card so for both of these you can't really do the highest quality maybe 8K video on your camera. Um, read speed is 280 and write speed is 210 for the Lexa. And the Sony one's a little bit slower, where it's 277 for read and 150 for write. So these are just numbers and they say your mileage might vary. So let's test out the read speed and the write speed of each individual card. And let's see what the difference is and whether it's worthwhile paying more for a Sony branded card or the Lexa one is just the same. So small note, this is made in Taiwan. It says somewhere here. And this one also says is made in Taiwan. So... Even though the back says manufacturer Sony Corporation Japan, the site still says made in Taiwan. They may come from the same factory, so let's uh, open the packs and see what they are like. So these are totally brand new. So the Lexa comes in this uh, plastic piece over here. So the packaging is uh, far fancier for the Sony one. Comes with a little plastic case that you can use to keep your memory card safely all right so on closer inspection both of these cards look similar the only difference is there is a yellow color lock tab and there's a white color lock tab on this one and of course the labeling is different um, but the design is obviously similar because it's a sd card and on closer inspection on the back we can see that the pcb has a slightly different print on uh, both of them so that might mean that it came from a different factory and both are you can see here made in taiwan Physical build quality is excellent for both. It doesn't feel flimsy. The PCB doesn't seem loose or anything. And I think both will stand up to normal use quite well. But the important thing about SD cards is the read-write speed and the sustained read-write speed. So one more for comparison would be the Toshiba card I have over here. So this is also rated 270 meg per second. And uh, it's also 64 GB and a U3 card. So they're all the same spec. Let's test it and see whether it lives up to the claims. And whether a more expensive card like the case of the Sony is better or you should just stick to other brands of cards and they'll do the same thing. Alright, so how we're going to do the test is I'm going to use my Sony card reader USB-C. Uh, this is the one that does a CF Express A and SD cards, so it should be pretty good. And we're going to test each of these uh, three memory cards over here with the Blackmagic this speed test. Okay, so first card here we're going to do the Lexar. Let's put it in. Alright, so this is how we're going to do the testing. I am using Blackmagic Speed Test app and I'm first going to erase the memory card. So let's erase the card. And we're going to use the biggest file size. So we want to find out what is the fastest sustained read and write speed and not the burst speed because the burst speed on the cards may be a bit faster because they might have a faster buffer but the buffer is really small. So we're going to test how fast the big memory block actually is, okay? So we're going to run the write test and the read test and then uh, write it one more time and then we will see the results from there. Okay, so basically the Lexa card has a similar write and read speed which is really good. On the box, the write says it's 210 but the read speed it says it's 280 which we are a bit far off. Okay, so that's the Lexa and now we'll do the Sony one. Okay, the same thing. I'm going to erase the card and let's go. Alright, so we can see that uh, in this testing, the Sony card is slightly faster than the Lexa card in terms of write, but it's not very uh, significant. It's about maybe less than 10 MB per second less on the Lexa card than the Sony card. Uh, however, the read speed on the Sony card is a lot faster. It's 245 instead of 190 something compared to the Lexa card. So you download your photos and videos quite a bit faster for this one. So now finally we have the Toshiba one. 
So interestingly, the Toshiba one is made in Japan. Okay, same thing. So I'm going to erase the disk. 5 GB selected again. Let's go. So if you notice, the initial write speed is always very fast because there's a higher speed buffer, I think. Then it will taper down as the buffer fills up. And what we get after a while is the sustained write speed, which is what we see over here. Okay, so the Toshiba card is done. Okay, so for reference, I have uh, just did the test on my external enclosure. It's a U-Green enclosure for my NVMe SSD. I've got a Samsung 4TB 990 SSD in there. And just see the speeds. So we're getting about 3,000, more than 3,000. So that is super fast. So there's nothing wrong with the tester. Okay, so I repeated the test and uh, after a few rounds, I've taken a screenshot of both the testings and let's go through. So this would ensure consistency because I've ran it about like five times and this is roughly what I got most of the time, plus minus maybe 5% to 10%. So anyway, for the Lexa card, the average we get is about 200 MB per second for write and about also around 200 for the read. So this is a pretty good card. It will serve you well for photography and videos. For the Sony card, however, we are also getting around 200 for the write and um, significantly faster for the read. So it's about 25% faster for the read speed for the Sony card. So what this means is that for photo taking, either card will serve you well. There will be no difference in the write speed, which is what's important. However, for the Sony card, you will be able to download your photos 25% faster. So if that's important to you, then yes, you should spend the extra money on this. But if you're just taking photos and pure photo performance for videos, they won't differ as much out of the camera because the write speed is the same. It's only when you read and download your stuff, then maybe the Sony one would be a little bit faster. So for the Toshiba one, which is this card over here, so it's uh, made in Japan from what we can see at the back, made in Japan. So this one has a faster write speed. So this one has about 240 MB per second write speed and the read speed is 2 to 5. So the write speed is faster than the Sony, but the read speed is slightly slower than the Sony. Okay, so what I can say that after doing a write test and read test of a 5GB file, none of them actually live up to what they say on the box. So for the Lexa, it says 280 and 210. Um, yeah, so does this look like 280 and 210? Not really. So it says read of 280. I'm only getting 2. 06 and right is 210 which is quite close but still not 210 so as for the sony one on the box it says 277 read which i'm getting about let's say optimistically 260 and right speed on this interestingly surpasses the right speed on the box so i'm getting about almost 200 right speed here but the box only says it does 150, so well done Sony. Whereas on the Toshiba card, I don't see a read or write speed indication, but it just says 270 MB per second. Nothing goes to 270, so this is what it is. You can neither go wrong with the Lexa or the Sony, just buy whichever is cheaper. I don't think one will outlast the other because um, they are both pretty well constructed. I've not used it enough to tell you whether which one lasts maybe 5 years, 10 years, nobody knows. But uh, as for writing speed, I think both are equivalent. Reading speed, downloading, maybe the Sony card will be a bit faster. But then again, is your time worth the extra $30? It's up, for you, up to you to decide. But yeah, you wouldn't go wrong with either of these, just get the one that is cheaper. And some of these are bundled with the Sony cameras if you buy them now. So if you like this episode, please give it a like. And uh, if you're wondering about the background, I went to Cape Town recently, so this is a um, landscape of uh, Lion's Head at sunrise. So that's for another video and uh, see you next time.